Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. So, Ben Simmons. From what I understand, uh, there's momentum heating up for various three-team and two-team deals involving Ben Simmons. Uh, as we reach closer to December 15th, that's when the eligibility uh, for a lot of players uh, to be traded uh, opens up, and that creates a lot of opportunities that maybe weren't available, of course, before that. So, this is what we're looking at right now. We didn't have any specifics uh, in regards to various possibilities. They didn't mention any teams or any names. They just said that as of the 15th, now the doors start to open right up and that the Philadelphia 76ers are engaged in conversations that are gaining momentum. That's as much as we got. So uh, this Ben Simmons thing is going to come to an end uh, before uh, the All-Star break, in my opinion. Um, gaining momentum probably means before the end of the month. But I think, I think you know, you can definitely count him in to be traded before it's over with. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, I didn't think that this would last throughout the entire season. I think him coming back into the organization, even though they had their little tit for tat kind of thing go on uh, last month, I think that was the beginning of a process for them to start the process of healing. I think it was still very new when we started hearing all those complaints about how he doesn't want to play and how they were going to, uh, you know, do certain things to try to, try to try to focus in on, on on getting full compliance from him but I the fact that we haven't heard anything since tells me that the the process has been going probably very well uh, that's that's what I took silence is good in situations like this in my opinion so uh, yeah this is where we're at I'm not surprised to hear him being traded uh, pos the possibility of him being traded right away as this um, this this 15th comes around and I have a bunch of places where I think he would probably um, be pretty 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 uh himself at i guess what i'm saying is there are certain places in the league that i think are going to have the ability to bring him what he needs they're going to be able to bring him the players the shooters uh the fast break players the complementary defensive pieces that will allow him to be his best self not everywhere in the league can do that for him and he needs uh to be somewhere that can so i would hope that the various places that have their eye on him have their mind set on bringing him what he needs or already having it there now the team that i'm looking at the most right now is the minnesota timberwolves because they're the ones that i heard that were coveting him the most and uh that's been been stated since the beginning of this process uh portland is also very interesting as well but being that cj has the collapsed lung and there's no timetable for his return uh he's not going to be able to be traded in that deal so he probably is going to be off the table as to which i don't expect Dame Lillard to be moved to Philly I don't expect that so uh, I'm looking at the Minnesota Timberwolves that's where my my mind tells me to go and the Pacers are, are also very relevant in this conversation because of course they got a few players in mind that they would like to move uh, as as being reported recently as well <laughs> try to start their rebuilding process I heard the San Antonio Spurs name uh, a little bit earlier in regards to Ben Simmons uh, and of course the Houston Rockets are very much in play for Ben Simmons the Houston Rockets are the team I think he's going to end up on. I, I've always said that. I thought him for John Wall made the most sense. And I, I think the possibilities for better trades have opened up. Uh, and I didn't really think that would come about. But I do think that uh, as this has played itself out, my opinion about whether or not Philadelphia should have done what they've done here has changed. Their approach has definitely worked out for them. Even though their team is not great it does look like they've hovered where they need to be. They've kept in range so that if they make a good trade, they can still be in contention, in my opinion. Uh, they didn't fall off a cliff, and that was most important. So Philadelphia is, and yeah, they got some good stuff coming out of uh, Tyrese Maxey. And, you know, Andre Drummond is filled in very, very well for Embiid as Embiid missed games this year. So, you know, I think Philadelphia is, is, is poised to be in a position to, to have a good second half of the season after this trade takes place. Uh, so we'll see if they actually uh, are able to get a really good uh, deal for him. Uh, I personally, if I were the GM on the other side of this thing, um, I, I, I would have to demand something that probably wouldn't get the deal done. Because I do look at Ben Simmons as a salary dump player uh, because of his contract, uh, as it is. You know, and his, and his limitations as a basketball player as it pertains to shooting the ball and things like that. You just have to look at that as not the greatest contract in the world. So if I'm bringing it in, I'm going to want some incentive to, to, to do so. And I just look at their situation 
in Philadelphia and say, you know, I, I don't know that the rest of the NBA is looking at it the way that I do. And because there are comp competing teams for his services, that probably would ultimately not be the greatest strategy um, at this time for most of the for the teams that are most serious about getting him. You kind of want to understand, I guess, at this stage in the game with Ben Simmons that his value is starting to increase once again. Uh, and I do believe a lot of it has to do with just his name hasn't been talked about over these last three weeks. So now, as I'm viewing it, quiet means good. I think most GMs are looking at it as quiet means good. And they're starting to re-evaluate what his contributions may be able to do for their team. Uh, some of these teams really need to infuse themselves with some excitement. I look at the, the Pacers. They may be willing to overpay for Ben Simmons at this point. I think it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if they find themselves in a in a bidding war to try to win that bidding war. Because nothing on that Pacer team, in my opinion, uh, is really better than Ben Simmons uh, for what it's worth. Now, I know that they have those two bigs, and Philly ain't going to want no bigs. Uh, but you can obviously move them in a third team. So that would not be a problem. I can just see that the Pacer team being involved in this. I can see uh, the Sacramento Kings also getting involved in this. The Toronto Raptors have wanted to make some moves with their power forward, so they may be involved in this. So it's about to be some, some trades. I don't think Ben Simmons is going to be the only one moved. I do not think that. I think we're about to see a, a plethora of moves over the next month or two uh, with a bunch of teams because, uh, first of all, the West is wide open. To be completely honest with you guys, the West is significantly weaker than we thought. So if you're a team like the Memphis Grizzlies, <laughs> you make a good deal. You can make your, you can turn yourself into a championship contender this year. Like, seriously. If, the, if Let's say the Memphis Grizzlies were able to get another impact player on top of all of what they have. They're going to be one of the best teams in the Western Conference. You know, and, and that's one of those situations. I look at the Sacramento Kings kind of the same way, believe it or not. If they're able to get a high-impact player without having to give up one of those three-headed monster uh, guards that they have, and keeping, uh, uh, you know, uh, my guy uh, Rashad Holmes, of whom I think is a very important piece to what they do, if they can keep those four players, they'll be all right. And I look at a guy like uh, Harrison Barnes, as somebody you probably want to keep too, but he's also someone who can help a winning team, and a team may be, one, may be, will, may be willing to part ways with something you would want to receive the services of him. I look at a team, obviously the Lakers are not involved in a situation like that, but if you're looking at the type of teams who would cover a guy like Harrison Barnes, older teams, winning teams, teams that have aspirations to get much better so they can contend, that's somebody that I'm looking at and I'm saying, okay, Sacramento, I want that player from you guys. So I'd imagine other GMs are doing that as well. And I could totally see him being moved to a winning situation. Even though I think Sacramento is very happy with him, to be honest with you. So, yeah, it's just a lot of stuff I'm looking at. Buddy Yield over there in SAC as well. You can see one, you can definitely see them moving on from him 100%. So, yeah, it's trade season, y'all. Even though we're not quite there yet. Uh, you know me, I like to be ahead of the game. And that's exactly what this is. We are, we are approaching... Uh, trade rumor season and expect to see some guys in some different uniforms. So that's going to be interesting. Another team I'm looking at is the Denver Nuggets. Uh, they've been plagued with some serious injuries and I just wonder what they see for their team this season. Uh, they've signed some guys to some big contracts. I would imagine it would be smart for them to try to see if they can get something in place that they can kind of kind of work with for the timeline that they're now faced with with players being out who are significant if i'm denver i'm basically saying we need to embark on that golden state mission when uh steph curry and clay thompson and KD all were gone at the same time and they were able to bring in the jordan pools and, and kind of semi rebuild while they were waiting for guys to come back i think denver's in a similar situation even though Jokic is healthy it would be wise for them to try to get the bones highlands and the bold bowls and, and then the Composos, more minutes, and maybe move on from some of those other guys uh, that are on the team that have been there a little longer than usual, guys that they probably love this day, but probably ain't going to love next season, that kind of thing. You want to move on from those guys, right? And then you want to put yourself in a position to have as much flexibility uh, so that you can bring in, uh, you know, so that you can have what it is that you need uh, to, to maneuver around the contracts that you have. Because, uh, cause look, Porter's going to be out for a while. It might be smart to just let Murray sit out for the rest of the season. Uh, so in this situation, it's like, all right, let's get, let's turn Bones into something. Let's turn Bowl into something. That's the direction I think Denver needs to go in. Uh, and they don't need to be worried about those tweener players, the, the good, good, good role players that are supposed to help them contend this season. 
because I just don't think those guys really have a role in this team right now as it pertains to the circumstances they're faced with without those players. So, yeah, that's what I think, man. I do think that. I think they have an opportunity to shave off some contracts uh, that are just flat-out bad contracts right now. Um, Aaron Gordon's contract is a mistake. It's a mistake for the Denver Nuggets. They need that flexibility to get them the role players that they need with the absence of Porter and the uncertainty of what his future holds. They're not going to be able to trade Porter because that contract is bad and he's hurt. But they can definitely, definitely move Gordon. He's still a very serviceable player, not on the greatest contract, but they need to try to get the, they need to get out, they need to get, to get out from under that contract. They need to. So that's something I'm very aware of because they're not going to give away Jamal Murray. Like I said, no Porter's moving. He's not moving. And of course, Jokic, you don't even, you never think about that. So that's really what it is, man. That's what it is. I look at the Denver Nuggets and I say they're in a world of trouble. Uh, they were a great team before these injuries, but now looking forward at two of their top three players coming back from serious injuries, you just don't see an opportunity for them to contend this season and probably not next. So that's a big deal to me. That's a very big deal. And uh, yeah, so they're in a weird spot. I'd imagine they might be active somehow. Uh, so those are the things I'm looking at, man. It's a lot. It's a lot to look at. Uh, of course, we go, you know, the Lakers, we have to make a move. I don't know if we have anything anyone would want, but even if we can just turn two into one, you know, that kind of thing, give away two old guys that can't do nothing for an average guy, we need to do stuff like that. That's exactly what we need to do. We don't need to be looking for superstars. We can't afford to bring them in anyway. But And we don't really need to be looking for high-level role players because, to be honest with you, we can't afford them either. But we do need some guys that are just above the level of uh, pretty good so that we can have a defensive scheme that actually works for ourselves. Because the blow bys and stuff like that, it's, it's at a point where we can't compete out there. We really can't. Uh, so we need some bigs, and we need some defensive players who can play to win. Um, so that's what I'm looking at, baby. I want to see, see trades. I want to see some trades. Uh, there's some teams I don't expect to do anything. I look at the Orlando Magic. I don't expect them to really do anything. I don't. I think they have a, a nice little team for themselves. Um... I don't, I don't expect that they have anything wrong there. The Houston Rockets, I heard they're willing to give, uh, give a look at Christian Wood, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I think he fits the timeline with the rest of that team. And since he's new to stardom, he's not really expecting to, you know, to dominate the league or has expectations for himself to win a championship right away. I think they should let him grow with the youngsters that they have. So I don't expect Houston to get involved either. I don't. I think they should stand pat and don't do nothing. Uh, so, yeah, this is just a couple teams. You know, I don't expect – certain teams but uh Brooklyn I don't expect Brooklyn to do anything either um Kyrie's not going to be on the move you guys are just going to sit that out he's not going to take the shot he's sticking to his script and that's that it's just a raw deal man I don't know what to tell nobody it's a raw deal I don't I don't I don't think Kyrie's uh going to waver on how he feels about this if he were I think he would have done it I really do I think we're at that place but it's a lot of season left it's a whole lot of season left so we'll see what happens um yeah man so that's what i gotta say that's what i gotta say miami heat i don't think they're gonna do anything although uh they're getting hit with some injuries man from what i understand bam out of is gonna be off about four to six weeks so that's a very 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 devastating injury for that team and i've always said since the beginning when i made my miami heat talk video that they don't have enough size they're too reliant upon bam out of bio to be healthy and i didn't think that that was a good recipe for the miami heat even though they have championship aspirations with him being down they've struggled i'm not surprised they just don't have enough size you need more than than, than Dwayne deadman and um you know bam out of bio to hold down your center position and you don't have a, a real power forward to go along with that you're running pj tucker at the power forward which is great don't get it twisted, but he's not your starter. He's not the guy you want to throw out there and expect to do a lot for you. Uh, so I just feel like the Miami Heat probably should make a move. They should do something to put themselves in a position to have one more solid big. Miles Turner would be an excellent acquisition for the Miami Heat. Now, I know they can't get him. You know, I mean, he would have to play behind Bam or with Bam, but he can stretch the floor, block shots, run pretty well. Bam could play the four. He's a multi-positional player himself. And I also like the idea of Bam not being forced to bang with everybody every night. I think if the Miami Heat were to acquire Miles Turner and not give up anything too substantial, uh, I think that could, sh that could shoot them right up to the top of these, to be completely honest with you. That single piece alone with Bam gives them one of the best defensive front court tandems in all of basketball. 
So I don't know what they would have to give up to get him. Probably a lot. Maybe even Duncan Robinson. But I think that size would be something that um, should be coveted by Pat Riley and the Heat right now. They should definitely, definitely want another big. Uh, I look at the Phoenix Suns the same way. Now, I don't think the Phoenix Suns should make a move, and I'm going to tell you why. Because they have such a perfect thing going for themselves. They are one of the only teams in the league that has had absolutely no adjustments to make from last season to this. And since they were the top of the, t the league in the Western Conference last year, that makes it even better. Whatever they were running was kicking butt last year, so they're even better at what they're running this year. So them getting off to a fast start, it's not surprising. They're going to stay at the top until somebody overtakes them. Them and Golden State is just pretty much a two-team Western Conference situation there. Uh, I do expect... No, I don't. Uh, well, the Lakers should make certain moves, and when they do, they should push themselves into that situation as well. You, you kind of still expect the Lakers to pull it together since there's so much season left and they're such great players, but honestly, if they don't, I won't be too surprised. I'm not going to lie, and I'm a Laker fan, as you know. But I, I am on the fence about how much faith I'm willing to put in this team turning it around. I, I just don't know. Uh, so that's just kind of what I'm looking at, man. I'm looking around the league. The Knicks, the Knicks got some issues right now. They've been struggling lately. Stephen A. Smith been calling them out for acting up and uh, celebrating on the basketball court and getting blown out about 20 in the same game on the road. I think it's one of those situations where you look at the New York Knicks and you say, okay, they could totally lose an infusion of something that they don't have. The Kimball Walker experiment is not it. I like Derrick Rose, but he's a year older. Manuel quickly is a player they probably should be giving starting minutes to at this time. They're still dragging their feet on that. So I don't really know what the New York Knicks are going to do if they decide to do anything at all. But I know right now uh, they're missing something. Something's missing, and they need, to, they need to find it. So we'll see what they do. So, yeah, man, it's a lot of teams, you know. At the end of the day, uh, one thing's for certain, two things for sure. COVID protocol is still in place. So the teams that have the most depth are probably going to be the ones that make it through the season after all. The teams that I think have the most depth, the Atlanta Hawks, the Golden State Warriors, um, I look at the Boston Celtics, potentially, depending on what night it is. They really do have a very deep team. Um, I look at, who else? It's not too many that I look at that are very deep. I actually think the Charlotte Hornets are fairly deep. Um, so, yeah, you know, those are the teams that I expect to see kind of really make a push. And that's why I think Golden State's ultimately going to win the championship, because they're amongst those teams and they're the best one of them. So, yeah, man. Keep, keep an eye on the Atlanta Hawks. I wasn't kidding about them. They are the very deepest team in the NBA. I said that in my Atlanta Hawks video, uh, Atlanta Hawks talk video. Man, I'm telling you that to this very second. They are still the team with the most talent overall. The problem is choosing which ones to put on the floor. That's the problem with the, with the, with the uh, Atlanta Hawks. And the fact that they are so very, um, uh, what's the name, Trey Young oriented, in my opinion. Because they have so many different weapons, they probably don't need to be you know, so centerpiece on one player. But that's neither here nor there. Oh, and another team that's extremely deep, the Houston Rockets. But they're babies, so no one expects them to do anything. However, they have gone on a seven-game winning streak, and quite honestly, I'm not surprised. Because I told you guys, it's one of the greatest young teams ever assembled. And they made me look crazy early this season because they started off very, very badly. They went on like a 10-game losing streak. And they turned it into a seven-game winning streak in the same season. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Houston's for real, real. Ain't going to be this year, ain't going to be next year. But two, three, four years from now, that team could be the NBA champion. Don't expect Jalen Green to continue to struggle forever. He's not going to look like this for much longer. Trust me, he's not. Anyway, that's what I got to say, man. Josh Christopher, shout out. I see you, man. I'm a believer. BDL44, thank you all for watching. I'm out.